welcome back, everybody, to our next episode of Unbridled and Entitled. My name is Russ Flicker. Hi, Russ. Lori Rothman along with you once again. Welcome back, everybody. So thrilled you could uh, tune in for another episode. It's probably worth a disclaimer before we get started, Lori. I'm thinking uh, just a quick one. Um, if your kids are super thoughtful and they don't get their news on TikTok, maybe they even watch Meet the Press. In that case, you do not need this podcast. In fact, if your kids listen to news and, and your opinions and carefully weigh their, their views, probably you should tune out. On the other hand, if you mostly connect with your kids and relate different ideas through Instagram reels, sending them back and forth, oh, what a cute puppy, or oh, what an amazing speech, how uplifting, or maybe you make TikToks together, or you as a parent are constantly stalking your teens on Life360, you landed in the right place. <laughs> it feels like my teens have been complaining to you about me. Um, our topic this week is social media and our kids. Uh, but don't worry, we're not discussing the long-term effects of social media on brain development or how the next generation or even life on earth is going to be impacted. Our impact, our focus is far more narrow and far more important critical, really. We're going to tackle how social media used by our kids and younger people in general affects us and how to avoid striking them with a stick. Don't do that. That's not nice. <laughs> um, but we do want to talk about how kids are getting informed about important issues, what sources they're going after with algorithms out there that sort of pile on to their social feeds. Are they really getting a balanced outlook view research on social issues and political issues, all of that combined in this day and age. A lot of content out there, 24 seven nonstop news cycle. Are they just going down a scroll hole? Um, <laughs> I like <laughs> I think, that. I like that term too. It's, I, we're all guilty of it, scrolling down the hole, the scroll hole. So speaking of that, um, mine turned up a lot of stuff this week that I thought it'd be kind of fun to go over, stuff that makes us ask, are they serious? Uh, first thing I guess is the royal family, Russ, Tough start to the year. The Princess of Wales had abdominal surgery. Prince Ch King Charles, excuse me, King Charles II uh, announced he has cancer. Sorry to hear that. But um, what, what really struck me is that Prince Harry, living out in Los Angeles, flew all the way from LA to UK to spend, what was it, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes with his dad, and then flew home. We know he wrote this book um, saying that right? Accusing the royal family of being racist, of being mental abusers, basically. So like, what is, what's going on, on both sides? And then the, the, the father, King Charles II, only sees him for a few minutes. Like what, 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 I don't, I'm very confused. What's going on here? What, what's your take? It is, it is insane. Um, although I have to say, I, I don't think I'm a bad person, but I can't be the only one when my family's at its lowest, someone's yelling, we're acting like children, our the adults are acting like children. It is comforting to know that there are dysfunctional families like the Royals out there to make us feel better about ourselves. Um, I'll, I'll tell you in all seriousness, I've already warned my son when he goes to college, if he does not contact me regularly, I will surprise him in his dorm room. Um, surprise. Uh, As you should. And he will welcome you with open arms. Listen, I have a large extended family too. And I'm sure my sister-in-laws think um, all of this, you know, that I'm crazy. They're not, you know, they're, they're totally justified, obviously, <laughs> but um, I would be devastated if uh, that got out, even to just a mutual friend or something like that. So look, the royals, they're royal, but they're human beings and everybody has family drama, like work it out. Now it's all just splattered across the headlines. It's, it's sad, but you know, I, I do wish them well and good health. It doesn't get worse than that. It's, you know, writing a book about it. It's like having a billboard which is just the transition I'm looking for. <laughs> In other news, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reports that although the Federal Highway Authority tried to shut down their humorous traffic signs, the Wisconsin DOT is able to keep them. And we're all better off. You know, texting and driving, autocorrect yourself. Uh, or camp in the woods, not on the left lane. I like that one. We have some of those pics we'll, we'll show you, but I just, I, I love those street signs or those billboards that, that make you give a second look. Well, let me ask you this. When you're at a stop sign rest, do you uh, look at your phone? Since my kids might listen to this, I have to admit that I do. Okay. 
Okay. No, but I mean, I think these signs are a great way to distract you from the distraction of the scroll hole. Right? I totally agree. I, actually, I was in Marblehead last year, and they, on their stop signs in certain locations, they have a little sign underneath that says, please, we really appreciate it. And I was like, wow, I really want to give them a fulsome stop. That was very nice. I think these signs are definitely going to save lives. They're so clever. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, all right. Another idea or something that caught my attention, pickleball. I, it was such a fad. I think it's still super, super popular, but it's not kind of in every corner of um, media at the moment. I know you and my husband might go and play every Thursday night and Michael come home and he'll be like, oh, I'm off to meet Russ to play pickle. I'm like, oh, you mean pickle pussy? Yeah, I, I think the game <laughs> is so lame. I'm sorry. Like the granny league could like crush you guys, but everything from the sound of the ball, it's like a stand up, you know, oversized ping pong game. I mean, you don't even break a sweat, but then I'm changed now because I saw all of these tennis legends are playing in tournaments. And it's so cool to see the likes of John McEnroe, Andre Agassi, Steffi Graf, like actually out on the court in great shape really fast reaction times. So now I, I, I'm, I'm kind of forgiving pickleball a little bit because it's bringing my idols of yesteryear back to me. Look, I think it's true. When you see people like Graf, Agassi, Flicker play pickleball, it is, it does get cooler. I mean, that, I, I get that. Um, although I'll say if you saw me play pickle, and I'm sure your husband's told you this, but I'm more McEnroe than Agassi with all my yelling and stomping my feet, and, you know, blaming the linesman for a bad call. Even in a friendly game, you're that guy. <laughs> well, I, I catch myself, but I have broken some pickle rackets. This is true in anger during a friendly game because I'm, I, I, I'm a small child. Well, look, I think the best thing about pickleball is uh, it's a, an in real life activity versus this social media theme that we're talking about in terms of content and where... And, and you know what? We don't even have to just say our kids are teenagers, but like adults in general, like where the the population is getting their news and how it's being delivered to them. I agree. I agree. And and especially, look, I, I saw an article on CNBC, CNBC, 65 year olds, more of them than ever that are healthy, happy and still working. And the point is, we as we get older, we're luckily we have a long time. You, Lori, you and so I so long, uh, so long before we're at 65. But but. It's great to see, stay active, stay, go after it, whatever it is, right? Go after it, work or fun, go after it. Well, it used to be right, 50 is the retirement age or retirement party, 55, 55 and over retirement communities. And now to think that we're just getting started, you know, it's like there's a whole nother chapter ahead. It's kind of cool. It is, although I do remind my wife that that means what we, you know, the, the nest egg you need if your plan is not uh, 20 years post-retirement, but, but 70 years post-retirement is, uh, is a factor in, in your plan. Well, do you think this uh, report is more about people needing to work for what you just said, for the reason you just pointed out that you need more money because people are living longer or because they generally just want to be out there working? I, I think it's mostly at about, 65. Sorry. Right. Right. And I think it's mostly they want to, and I, and I, and we all want that. That's a better story. I mean, when you, when you occasionally do see or hear about someone who's doing that because they need it, that's very tough. And I'm glad they have the opportunity, but that's very tough. Let's, let's hope we all, whenever we reach that point are doing it because we, because we love it because we want to. Um, yeah. So talking about getting older, I do, even though I want to um, deny my middle age, I do find myself doing things that are so stereotypical. Like, I think it was Lisa um, asking me about lunch the other week and Russ's wife, Lisa. And I said, well, we can't go to this place. We can't go to that place because the parking is really challenging. You have to parallel park. There are meters. Like I'm at that stage of life where I just, this, the stress of the logistics overshadows the actual enjoyment of the event that I'm trying to get to. It's bad. It's, it's really pathetic. I totally get it. I understand. And I will say that your husband told me that it is better if you don't try to power parallel park, but. Uh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> terrible. Disposable cars. <laughs> That's the way to go. We are the driverless cars we've been looking for. Um, 
All right, well, let's let's move to our topic of the day, if you will. Okay. Um, when they were young, social media was a huge blessing for us managing our kids. Right? We all—it's you know—you know—the ability to kind of give a child an iPad on a plane or at a dinner was golden. Um, it was so great to find fifteen minutes apiece. Um, but we know it's a mixed blessing now in relationships, in families, if you will. Um, you know, do your do your kids? I mean, they, they've got to be on TikTok and Instagram all the time. I know mine are. You know, it's interesting. So our kids were born in the 2000s, and it was sort of the um, onset of the iPhone. And I just remember not going out very much. Like instead of bringing the kids to the restaurant and sticking an iPad in front of them, we just like met friends at their homes. And I remember, like, I think back to those years, I'm like, oh, those were the golden years. But if I really think back to those years and re-immerse myself in them, they were hard and exhausting. <laughs> and I couldn't wait till they would be over. Um, but now it's almost like they are just consumed with um, the information and whether it's Listen, I'll tell you whether it's for fun and enjoyment and entertainment or to inform themselves of political issues or social issues or to get grades in school, because even school is now all digital. Um, it's really impossible to live without having, a, you know, a phone or, or an iPad or, or laptop or anything. I mean, you you are completely cut off. And and, you know, we that's a problem which has been well documented and well researched. But. I think what we wanted to delve into today more or less was just the unbalanced and how, how easy it is to get un, unbalanced or one-sided news information uh, because of the way all of this is structured. That's right. That's right. And I, I know now that our kids get all of their, their, their facts from, from, um, you know, from social media. And in fact, uh, you know, my son, who who is um, a bit of a fitness geek, um, and so he's he loves to, you know, watch videos about how how to eat, how to work out, you know, all those things. And, and it's fascinating to me because if I have conversations with him, he'll be dismissive of things that we've, you know, that we've known for 50 years. Tell me something is cutting edge or they new science, if you will, which always makes me nervous, <laughs> the new science. Um and, and, you know, it's just a question of really understanding what is he gathering? So I, I now have to go through and say, who are you following? Let me, let me see what they're saying um, to, so I can evaluate for myself. Um, and of course, he's a young man now, but, but knowing where you're getting your information from, which could be some influencer who may be really bright and may be on point, or maybe some, you know, some crazy person with a, uh, with a, a phone and a, and a microphone. It's like Big Brother is watching, right? Like they know where you, what sites, what influencers you follow. So I'm wondering, would you ever consider kind of going in there and just going to various sites just to change that big brother impression of who you are and what you're interested in? Like, instead of the fitness sites, maybe you do, I don't know, the nutrition site, whatever, do you know what I'm saying, right? Like, how can you sort of change and sort of reset what, what you're seeing? Lori, I think this is genius. No, honestly, we did not. This was not part of a rehearsal, folks. This is just genius on the spot. I should take my son's phone yeah. when he's not watching, which means what? Showering or sleeping, right? It's very, it's hard to get access to it. Exactly. But, but I could get it when he's showering or when he's sleeping. Scroll and search CNN and news articles and Newsweek and other things and, and, or to your point, you know, you know, uh, nutrition websites from, you know, from respected sources and perhaps I could force him into other, that is a brilliant idea. In fact, it, it ties to, I have, I have sometimes emailed my family something or I'll yeah. text them a picture of a video and they, my son told me, I, I don't read that stuff, but if I forward to him in TikTok, if I share something in TikTok, he actually watches it. So that is Genius, Lori. I'm going to try that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, exactly. This, I, I think the biggest challenge, as you pointed out, is just uh, sneaking the phones away, figuring out the passcodes or whatever have you. But um, no, I, I really worry, and I don't want to get into politics, but we are in a, in a, a political year, presidential election year. And, uh, you know, it's obviously divisive, but it's just... Um, you know, you just want your kids to know where to go and how to be informed and also how to engage and how to have a voice of their own. And I think, I mean, I know that I'll be on a 
department store website or a retail store and all of a sudden I'm, you know, my feed is now clogged with not just ads, but influencers who are talking about the latest products in Sephora, you know? And so this is just, again, uh, the, the scroll hole, you know, we used that term earlier in the podcast. It really is. And it really concerns me about how this generation, which by the way, I'm getting on my bully pulpit here, was also so affected by the COVID years, um, that isolation and the, the learning stall that happened during those couple of years. Um, so I feel like as parents, maybe, you know, we're sort of brainstorming on ways to sort of refocus them to get a broader outlook and to be open-minded and to take in more sources. So, I think the first step is understanding that that's happening. And yeah. to your point, you know, if you, if you're talking to someone about it or you're walking somewhere or you search somewhere, suddenly that's all you see, you know, someone mentioned a cruise, you, you, you Googled cruise, suddenly cruise art, you know, cruise articles and advertisements are everywhere. Um, now I do think a lot of our listeners are wondering one of the classic questions of our day, is it divisive or divisive? But I think- Is it divisive or divisive? No, I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's both. I think it's is either, it, but it, like it sounds, it sounded really, it made you sound materially smarter. So you've called me, wait, genius at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want uh, everyone to think, or let me say differently. I don't want everyone to know yeah. that you're much smarter than me. Oh, so please. don't use big words. Yeah, but you know multiple. what? You're, you're way funnier than me and you understand social media so much better because through this whole project, I think you've wanted to throttle me because I'm like, I don't know how to post these videos. <laughs> I can't figure out where this podcast goes. Everything is relative. My kids would laugh <laughs> hilariously if they heard you say that. I, I, I was, um, I emailed my kid recently and I was like, Hey, you know, Molly, did you see an email? You know, and I actually, I reached out. It was my son who said, dad, who emails? And I was like, pal, you're in for, you know, you're, you're going to go into college. Like you do need to check, like, like your, your university is going to send you emails. They're right. not going to text you important stuff. I mean, you know, but it's just a very different, it's a different, um, you know, different look for this, Always, for this generation. Right. Progress as the generations go on. Can we talk more about the, um, you know, the, the feed, how the, your feed is populated. This is kind of something you did to me this week. Um, <laughs> No, 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 no. So, you know, we have an amateur comedy troupe made up of friends in the neighborhood, eight or 10 of us, give or take. Uh, we get together and throw spaghetti off the wall, see what sticks. And then we've done a couple of shows and we recently decided to share bits and pieces of the comedy show. And this will get back to our topic, I promise. But talking about what, again, what pops up in your Instagram feed. So, one of my younger daughter's 14 year old friends said, Oh, Hey Lori, I saw you pop up on Russ's Instagram feed. And it was a little bit of a, you know, off color joke appropriately edited for a family audience, but the meaning nonetheless was conveyed. So it's like, okay, great. I'm breaking my own rules about what's popping up in the feeds, but whatever. Anyway, it's all in good fun. That is, it's very funny because my, my daughter who is in, you know, in college um, does tell me that, you know, some of her friends occasionally do stumble on it. And I told her, look, I will not friend any of your friends. I am not seeking out to share our comedy bits with, you know, with your friends. Um, but it's bound to happen. Um, it's bound. And, and here's, here's a, a little bit of a shift, but do your kids have LinkedIn profiles no. yet? No. And that's My kids are a, are a step younger than yours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're not quite in the college application process stage yet. But that's got to be a big deal for for college kids. It is because um, when you're interviewing for summer internships, et cetera. So once you're in college, let's say you need a LinkedIn um, uh, profile, and it's a it's a big deal. I think you use it to you know seek out internships. But also, I know a lot of big companies now are looking at your social media profile, mm -hmm. your postings. Um, to see who you are, and I, I've had this conversation with my daughter quite a bit. Make sure you're not posting, you know, inappropriate content, whatever that is. Even under wait a minute, shrinking. but will they link to her father and his? That is exactly. <laughs> by the way, that is my daughter has said that for like five times. Like, Dad, you're killing me. I said you don't get judged on the you know on the inappropriateness of your of your because family. Because you all use the same last name. I'm just that's true. It out there. You're right. So, oh, right. I hope not. Oh my gosh. I hope not. I hope they're not, they don't see it. And certainly I assume she's not hurt by it, but that is by the way, exactly where she went. 
in, you know, it's all in good fun. And I think it's great to, uh, you know, engage your kids and let them know that you still have a sense of humor, or at least trying to have a sense of humor about this crazy world in which we live in right there. I tried to blow it up and make it like philosophical, but I like it. I like I it. I think their experience will speak for themselves and the recruiters will be like, wow, it's so impressive that those are your parents and you, you are overcame. <laughs> exactly. Talk about overcoming, overcoming diverse, uh, overcoming, you know, real challenges. I mean, um, well, I, the one thing I said to my kids is now that you're making in, you know, LinkedIn profiles, make sure you don't include some of the things that are for me as a, as an employer, absolute strikes, okay. which is like calling yourself a guide, a guru, or a thought leader. Oh, cringe. <laughs> um, have you seen the new meta goggles? Have you seen anything about that? I've seen them. I think I tried to buy a pair for Mike for Hanukkah, but I think he returned them. Can you, are they retail? Am I, am I understanding correctly? I are think they out you can, for retail? I think sale? you can get them now. I think you can get them I may now. have tried to buy them. They're just, they're just like AR goggles or something. You can get them in the department store. Right? Yeah. They, or no, are they, is, is this something else way more high tech? I haven't, I haven't bought them yet, so I'm not sure, but I'll t it's kind of like, you know how the head up display on a car where yeah. you can see, or a fighter pilot has like that head up display. Mm -hmm. So you can get these glasses where you can, and they're showing them, you know, on commercials now. So I assume that I, I assume they're retail. I have not seen one of them in, in, in real life, but um, where you can sit somewhere and instead of holding a laptop, your laptop screen is sort of displayed in front of you. It's just getting weird. I mean, even the commercials, I thought they were Saturday Night Live skit mm -hmm. showing someone on the subway, you know, using their fingers to scroll through, you know, uh, invisible screens. So have you heard this term singularity? I have, yeah. <laughs> Is that, do you believe that's where we're headed with the AI and it's only a sh matter of a short period of time before... AI compute and computers just become smarter than humans and they take us over and it's, it's we're zombies or whatever the, I mean, it's, I think, okay. look, I think they are probably close to being smarter than humans and that will happen. Whether they'll take over that, that to me is a very different thing. And I, I I'd like to believe I, I certainly, I believe they won't and that won't happen. Um, uh, but I, I'll tell you an anecdote that I thought was fascinating. The air force, the U S air force mm -hmm. ran a, a, stim a simulation with AI on, and they gave AI this test. It was all a simulation. You need to shoot down as many enemy planes as you can, and you get one point for every enemy plane you, you shoot down. And there's this other location, which is headquarters, which tells you which planes are enemy planes and which ones are not enemy planes. And I guess in s some of the simulations, the AI destroyed headquarters in order to not be told planes were not enemies in order to quote unquote win. That's this is true. You can, you can Google this. This was, so that's an example of the craziness, which is not that the AI was out to kill people in planes, but that if you don't prompt, you know, uh, you know, um, in AI properly, if you're not giving the technology the right, and it's very complicated, it could be very, very detailed, the right information you can have catastrophic impacts. So that, that worries me for sure. For sure. It's so fascinating where technology is headed and how, you know, we're as Gen Xers, kind of the last right generation of people to have grown up and gone through school without computers. I mean, I remember taking an actual typing class. Um, me too. On typewriters. And somebody was saying, uh, you know, the, the giveaway when um, a kid turns in an essay is if there are two spaces after the period, an adult wrote it, a parent wrote it, because that's how we <laughs> learn to type. And now here we are talking about AI taking over the world and being smarter than humans and just you know, it, it's, it's just kind of overwhelming, but, um, this is where we're at, you know, this, just is, this is the, the typical American dinner, right? Sitting around the dinner table. I love your description, by the way, of dinner at the Flickr household. <laughs> you, you have to share that with us. Well, with din dinner at the, at where, where everyone's got their own phone out with their own headphones, watching their own experience. Yes. yes. And together, but you're doing it together. Yes. And yes. Bonding. Yes. That's a, uh, that's a, I, Mike Manzuras and I came up with that discussion of how these, how these work together. And it's, uh, seeing that classic family dinner is very funny. Um, but Mike well, is in the comedy troupe. You have to, um, post some of his stuff too. I think people get a kick out of it. They we, haven't I, heard him. Live. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. I will post some of his stuff. Yeah, All the guys in our, our group are pretty talented. So 
Anyway, we are. Um, well, I could, it, I could just chat with you forever, Russ. You're you're so easy breezy. Lots to, to think about. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, well, that is about our time. Um, until next week, when we cover the next great issue of our time. At what point in a marriage can you just get dinner reservations for Valentine's Day? What do you um, make best? <laughs> reservations <laughs> oldest joke um well thank you all for joining us thank you so much Lori. i love i love chatting with you bye everybody